everyone, it's Bethany, and I'm actually working on some cute little cups for my girls. I thought I would share what I'm working on. Um, I found these cute little bendy straw, straw cups at Target. They're super sweet, and um, they have little curved straws inside. And they're just really darling, and I wanted to bring these out for summer, and they totally slipped my mind until I noticed them in my little pile of things to craft. And I was going to just create little cute initial um, designs on the top. So I'm going to show you how I did that in design space with a little bit of curved text and it's just going to be a really simple vinyl project but I thought I'd share what I'm working on just in case you have something like this in mind or if it inspires you to do something like this as well. So we're just going to be using a simple cup and I'm just going to be adding some vinyl to the lid. I'm going to use the Cricut Joy so I have my little Cricut Joy mat out because I'm also going to use some non-smart material. I'm just going to use some Oracle 651 vinyl. So I'm going to place that on the mat and send it through just for this really small design and then I have a weeding tool and scissors I also have a cotton swab because I'm going to clean the top of the surface with rubbing alcohol to make sure it's ready and prepped for the vinyl to go down and then I have a scraper tool and then I'm going to measure my little top of the cup for um, just some help in Cricut Design Space so I can get my design just perfect. And I'm also going to be using some masking paper transfer tape as well, so I'll link everything below. That way you know everything that I used today in this little video. So um, aren't these cute? I think they're so fun. The girls are going to really get a kick out of them. So I am just going to remove the lid. That's all I'm using um, to do a little design. And I'm just going to measure, and it is three and a half inches across. So I'm going to use that measurement to hop into Design Space, and I'm I'm going to show you how I made this little circular design with a little monogram on it. Again, I'm just putting their first initial on there right now. We're getting used to looking for um, the first letter in our name currently, so it's really fun when the girls notice um, which cup is theirs based on their first initial. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here was the first little one that I made. It's super cute and it turned out really great on the cup. So I'll show you how I went about creating that to make sure it was sized appropriately. So the first thing I did was I went over to shapes and I grabbed a circle and then I went up to the size and just typed in 3.5 to make that um, the exact same dimensions as the top of my lid. And just for visual purposes, I colored this pink. Now what I did is I went over to the text box and I used the font Kate's ABC's Baby Girl and I'll type that in so that you guys can see what that looks like. It's this one right here. So I grabbed that and then what I did was I just typed in an initial plus an asterisk because I thought the asterisk on this font was so cute. It almost looked like a flower. So I just typed out a line of um, alternating between this cute little asterisk and their initial. Okay, and so once I had that all typed out, I believe the font was around 26, 27. I think it was like 26.61, but that may change. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use a double layer on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that other layer and just use a single layer. And so for curving text, you're just gonna go over to this curve um, little icon right here, and then I pulled it all the way over to the right, and it connected them right in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this font white just so I can see it. Oops, did it uncurve it? Let me see here. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm just going to go and place it on my little cup here. Perfect. And I'm just going to measure and make sure it's just about the same as this one. It looks like I can actually bring this up just a little bit. Okay, perfect. And I'm just doing that for reference based on the one I already made, but that looks really good. Okay, so once I know that I like um, how it looks, I know I'm ready to cut. So I can hide everything I don't want. So I'm gonna hide this because I already cut that out. I'm also gonna hide the circle because I don't need the uh, Cricut to cut out a circle. And you can do this on any cutting machine. I'm just using my Joy. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Make It, and it's gonna place it right on my mat. So I can do without a mat if I was using Smart Materials, but I am actually going to be using some non smart materials so I'm going to click on the mat so I can place my any material on the mat and click continue then I'm just going to select the premium vinyl setting default pressure is just fine and I'll get to cutting okay so now I'm just going to place my vinyl right on the mat make sure that it's all pressed down and looks really nice and then I can go ahead and auto feed it into the machine and I'll select go and it will get to cutting so while that's cutting, I'm just going to take some rubbing alcohol and put a little bit on this little cotton swab 
And I'm just gonna make sure that the top of this lid is all clean. Again, I've had these for quite a while. I wanna say I got these in the winter time and I thought, oh, those will be so sweet for summer. And then just it slipped my mind, simply slipped my mind. So just making sure that's all nice and clean and prepped just removes any dirt or grime or fingerprints or oils. That way the vinyl lays down really nice. So adding little names or things to cups is a really wonderful way to really get your feet wet with um, adhesive vinyl. So it's a great beginner project. You could also type a name out and then curve the text if you wanted to do that on a circular surface. That would be really sweet as well. Okay, so now this is done and I'll just unload it from my machine. And this is a very delicate cut, so the pieces are really small. So what I like to do is I like to take the um, back, so I flip it over, and I just want to run my scraper tool over just to make sure all the little pieces remain in the same spot right before I start weeding everything. And then I'll go ahead and take my scissors and double check that I don't have any materials that I can save, which I do. And I can just put these in my little scrap box and reuse them. Okay. Always keep your scraps. You can also save the middle if you'd like. I'm okay with letting that go because I just have a ton of scraps right now. But if you want to save the middle, go for it. Um, if you missed my tutorial this week, I did a whole shirt on Scrap HTV. So make sure you're always saving what you can because you never know when you can use it to create something a lot bigger. So now I'm just going to take it really slow. Again, those pieces are, whoops, really small. I just grabbed one of my little C's so I can go ahead and I'll place that back down. It's really easy to fix if you pull one up. So I'll just place that right back down. Okay. So I'm just going to go really slowly and start weeding away the surrounding area. Okay, so I'm just still going really slow and taking out all that surrounding area. So anything that's not going to be part of my final design will come off on this little weeding part. And making sure that the things that need to stay, stay. Okay, and I just have one little middle here that I need to take out, and then I will be ready to go. So everything has dried, it's all set to go, and I'm going to use a little piece of this masking transfer tape. So when I did my first one, I used uh, my clear transfer tape because obviously I wanted to be able to see where I was laying it down. But I'll be honest, I felt like it was a little too sticky for... Um, for this, it was having a hard time coming back off of the transfer tape. So I'm going to use this masking transfer tape because it is definitely um, less aggressive in terms of stickiness. So I'm going to see if that works a little bit better. So I just place that transfer tape right over the top of the vinyl and I'm just really scraping those pieces down just to make sure all the little letters connect to that transfer tape. And this is what will take the design off of the blue carrier sheet that it cut on and transfer it over to the tape so we can get it on the little lid. Okay, so I think that's good. I like to turn mine around and get the other side as well. And then what I'll do is just peel away my blue carrier sheet and it leaves the design right on my transfer tape. Okay, so now I'm ready to place this here. And again, that clear transfer tape worked really well because I could really see um, in between, but this you can still see as well. You can get you can get close enough. So I'm just going to lay it where I want it, and then I'm going to start just taking my finger and rubbing around and getting that design really laid down. And after I do that, I'll take my scraper and just really reinforce that with pressing it down with my scraper. Just go around there. And you can reuse this transfer tape as well. So once you peel it up, I just sometimes stick it right back on the roll and and reuse it. So I don't reuse this transfer tape a ton just because it is um, less sticky, which is really great because it works super well. And it's also really price affordable. So sometimes I toss it and I don't feel guilty about it just because I don't think it costs that much in the beginning anyway. Okay, so now I'm just going to start peeling away and making sure that that stays on the cup. That is doing so much better than the other transfer tape last evening. 
There we go. So because this design is definitely more intricate and smaller, I'm definitely going to do hand washing only on this, which will be simple because it's a lid, so it'll just take a simple quick rinse and it'll be good to go, but I will definitely be avoiding the dishwasher with this. So hand washing only just to make sure that it stays nice as long as it can. But how cute is that? So now they just have their little initials. I love the little asterisk and how it just looks like little flowers. I think it's super girly. So I can just place that right on there. It looks really sweet and they're personalized and ready to go. So I'm glad this is all done and ready to go. I think it'll be really fun. So let me know if you enjoyed this. Let me know if you enjoy personalizing things as well. My husband lovingly says that I'm in love with monograms and personalizing things and I have to say, I totally admit that I definitely am that girl. I just love personalizing everything we have. So if you enjoyed this, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And as always, make sure you're subscribed so you see what's coming to the craft channel next. Have a wonderful day.